course, this video is sponsored by Aura. So this beauty right here is a cutie OLED TV. It takes all the amazing things about OLED TVs, the incredible black levels, the colors, the contrast, and just makes them all better. And for a while, I thought this was as good as TV technology could ever get. Until this is a micro LED TV. Or at least it would be if I had a quarter of a million dollars to drop on a new set. But if I had a micro LED TV right there, it could be even brighter than the sun coming in through that window. But QD OLED and micro LED are at like the top uh, when it comes to TV technologies right now. But you might not know the real difference between the technology. If you're looking to throw down some solid dough for one of these premium TVs or you want to fantasize about having one of these in your home in the future, this is going to be the video for you. All right, so as I go through here, just know that I'm not doing a direct comparison between two actual TV sets more kind of demystifying the tech behind each type of TV technology and performance you can expect out of each type of TV. So you can decide if a QD OLED is right for you or either wait for a micro LED TV. So QD OLED is just an OLED panel, essentially a little bit brighter and a little more vibrant. It still uses the individual organic diodes that light up independently to get their signature high contrast and deep blacks, but QD OLED adds a layer of quantum dots over those diodes which both adds richness to the colors and boosts the brightness of the white light. Micro LED is surprisingly kind of like a cousin to OLED technology. So they're just very small versions of LEDs so that you can fit millions of them into a panel. So like OLED, the red and green and blue diodes that require backlight, they are self-illuminating. But unlike OLED, micro LEDs do not contain organic compounds and there are a huge amount of advantages in that alone but QD OLED has some tricks up its sleeves. So let's get into the advantages and disadvantages uh, of each tech. If you're looking for a TV that has just incredible black levels, uh, incredible contrast, and looking for a TV that has plenty of brightness, then QD OLED is gonna be the way to go. When I got my TV, uh, an OLED G2 a few years ago, QD OLED had just come out and they weren't available in really any sizes larger than 65 inches. Had I been buying one now, QD OLED definitely would have been the way I would have gone. All the good things about OLED are just amplified. Colors are more vibrant and have more color detail in the mids and the shadows. You've got brighter highlights in OLED displays, although both high quality W OLEDs will actually beat it in highlight brightness. Also, you can get a very thin display here as well. You get incredible contrast. I'd even say perfect contrast. They all tend to have really high-end processors and up-to-date features, primarily because this is still a newer technology. But it's also a very young technology. It kind of came out around 2019. So it's still evolving. And there have been huge jumps between generations one and two. And this year's is kind of Gen 3. Actually, each year has gotten brighter and brighter, and Gen 3 sets can now hit up to 3,000 nits. And probably the best thing about QD OLED technology, it's actually available now. You can go into a store, order it online, and you can get one. But it's not perfect. Because it's new and still flagship, uh, the price ain't great, but it is coming down. Like I alluded to earlier, there were limited sizes when they first came out, but sizes have opened up and gotten bigger, but also means so of the prices. There are ways to reduce the cost, and that's going for a Gen 1 QD OLED. But those Gen 1 sets weren't perfect. Uh, you might see some magenta cast when the diodes are off. And this happens on QD OLED monitors more often, but it does happen on TVs too. Thankfully though, Gen 2 and Gen 3 QD OLED panels have addressed this. Burning was something that was potentially a concern with Gen 1. Now it got fixed in Gen 2 and 3, but something at least to be aware of if you're looking to pick up an older Gen 1 QD OLED set. So one disadvantage of OLEDs in general, and QD OLEDs especially, and that's sort of what makes the O in the OLED, they use organic compounds. And ultimately, because those organic compounds will eventually break down and degrade over time, making your image dim or potentially get dead pixels. Now, it doesn't happen right away. It's far removed. You actually get about 50% degradation at 28,000 hours, almost 10 years of eight hours a day of the TV being on. So it's a great sure, but it's gonna take a very, very long time. And you'll probably be well onto your next set by the time that happens. QD OLED, for those looking to purchase it, are those that want the best TV technology right now. You want the best blacks, you want incredible colors, you want contrast, you want a razor thin set. It is the best TV technology that is widely available in multiple sizes right now. 
but that won't be the case forever. So while QD OLED may be one of the best TV technologies you can buy right now, what about the best TV tech you can buy in the very near future? All right, quick wardrobe change and TV break uh, to talk about some sort of really important security stuff. Uh, I consider myself careful and hyper aware of what I click on and open on my phones and laptop. But even so, I have been like that close to giving up access to my app. Like I actually made a whole video about it. Um, I'll link to the story down below. And recently I almost fell victim to a crypto scam. My hardware wallet stopped working. So I reached out to support online and I got a bunch of replies from people with very legit looking bios claiming to be CEOs or claiming to be PR people uh, for this hardware wallet company told me click this link and they'll do it all for you. And like something clicked and like that doesn't sound right. So I asked them, can I get to that link directly from the main website? And they were like, no, we built this special just for that. And fortunately that was kind of what set the light off. It would have compromised my hardware wallet and some money as well. And like these close calls, like they, they still kind of shake you a little bit. That kind of made me realize how no matter how careful I think I'm being, hackers and scammers are always finding new ways to kind of social engineer and exploit our data and steal our identities. And it's a constant battle to stay one step ahead. And even if I do stay one step ahead, that wouldn't stop me from becoming a victim of a data breach. Uh, recently, AT&T revealed that over 73 million customer records, both existing and former customers release on the dark web. I was one of them. And they recommended those effective use strong passwords, monitor account activity, uh, consider credit freezes, which I froze all three. I could still do everything right and still have to scramble to protect myself, especially with what happened with at and And that's why I use Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura is an all-in-one app that protects my identity, monitors my credit, secures my devices, and removes my info from data brokers. So the next time a big data breach occurs, Aura has me covered. Let Aura have you covered too, and let them help keep your information safe. If you want to check it out, go to Aura.com slash John Rettinger to start a two-week free trial. Uh, all the information you need, though, will be down below. Micro LED is touted as a TV technology to end all TV tech. If the hype is real, then this could be the pinnacle of TVs. But what makes micro LED so great? All right, so first, like the size is limitless. You essentially get them in little panels and you can put up as many panels as the size set you want. It also means you can create different aspect ratios. So you can get like a weird 32 by nine aspect ratio if you want. Whatever you want to do, you have more functionality there. Because the miniaturization of the LEDs, you're getting an incredibly sharp image with perfect contrast. And I should say, just because micro LEDs come in panels, when you go to buy a micro LED TV, it'll already be in the size that you buy. You buy a 75 inch micro LED, it'll just be that. You don't have to buy individual panels to move them around, but you do get that option. Brightness is a huge advantage here. Um, most will sit around 4,000 nits, but some will get up to 10,000. And if you remember, the brightest QD OLED is around 3,000 nits. And because of that brightness, you're getting extremely vibrant colors uh, as well. Uh, you can also get very thin design with really no bezel at all on the screen. And since LEDs don't use organic compounds, there's not the same degrading potentially over time. That means they're going to be a lot more efficient than OLED or QD OLED. And due to that better performance from the LEDs over organic diodes, you're getting access to a much wider color gamut and faster response times. So not only is the TV brighter, they're also more color accurate than QD OLEDs. But like everything, they're not perfect. Uh, the biggest disadvantage is price. It can be the price of a house. Well, at least a house from maybe like four years ago. Most micro LED displays are over $100,000. And Samsung will happily sell you a 146 inch micro LED 4K TV right now for almost a quarter of a million dollars called the wall. Due to the manufacturing process, smaller sizes right now are hard to come by. Samsung announced that TVs as small as 50 inches are coming, but only prices for their 76 to 114 inch models were announced. And just for comparison, that 76 inch micro LED TV is $90,000. Installation also isn't as simple as taking it out of the box and putting on a stand or mounting on a wall. Uh, right now, it requires expert installation, which alone is probably more than just the cost of a QD OLED TV. There should be more self-install friendly designs coming, but they're not here yet. I've seen micro LED in person. It looks unbelievable. 
And if you have this TV up on your wall, you're going to absolutely love it. But if you don't have a QD OLED sitting right next to a micro LED, you're probably gonna think your QD OLED looks absolutely incredible. While micro LED is still like the high point of TV technology, it's hard to see this being for absolutely anybody until the price comes way down. And we're probably talking five to seven years before an affordable 75 inch TV becomes available. So I think the moral, if you want the best TV available, QD OLED is going to be the way to go. It looks absolutely incredible. Still gets plenty bright, although it might not be as bright as a micro LED can offer. But QD OLED, especially the brand new ones, the Gen 3, are absolutely incredible and about as close to perfect TVs as you can get. You decide to pick up a QD OLED TV, maybe use it for five or six years. By the time you're ready for your next set, micro LED is probably gonna be ready for its turn in the batter's box.